back guys from Storm Air 51. Oh man, um, I, I missed it, didn't I? Yeah. You know, I was just waiting to make sure that, you know, this didn't become a national tragedy and this video wouldn't be in poor taste and... No, okay, I'm lying. I'm just late with this thing. If you somehow don't know what I'm talking about, located a few miles south of Rachel, Nevada, lies Groom Lake and the Nevada Test and Training Range, a highly classified facility of the United States Air Force, or as it's also known, Paradise Ranch, Dreamland, or uh, the worst kept secret in American history. Or also, Area 51, thought by many conspiracy theorists to hold the remnants of a downed alien spacecraft from Roswell, New Mexico, which... Uh, well, we'll get to that town another time. This was brought on by the highly secretive nature of the area since it was first established in 1955 to test out U-2 jets. And even back then, they had a hard time keeping this place under wraps as they accidentally let one of those planes go airborne. That's right, they accidentally made a plane fly. Well, that's what they tell us anyway. All this helped stir up the idea that the government was hiding extraterrestrial life. That in the US just flat out refused to even acknowledge this place was called Area 51 until like 2013. All that and, well, come on, aliens just sound way more interesting than developing new methods of blowing each other up. We are completely obsessed with the very idea of life from other planets, so you can't blame people for wanting something a little more interesting happening right under their noses. And since we can't just waltz into the place and see for ourselves, pop culture has taken it upon itself to imagine just what goes on in Watertown. But I, I forgot that's also another nickname for that place. Area 51 sits in this weird little space between reality and fiction. We know it exists, but we have no idea what's inside. So we are left to just explore whatever video games have for us. And that's what we're gonna do today. Hop in, nerds. We're going on a gamecation. First game we're gonna talk about today, and it's one you're gonna see quite often on the show, so just a heads up, is The Crew and its sequel, Crew 2, as they both have a UFO that's housed in, well, what looks less like a government facility and more like a bunch of abandoned theme park equipment. It's located at this point on the map if you are curious to find it for yourself, and obviously its location here is the closest interpretation of where Groom Lake is on the real United States map. You can use either game to get there, doesn't matter, they, uh, they're pretty lazy with that sequel. Continuing on, we have War of the Monsters, also features a level that, while it doesn't flat out say Area 51, it's clearly inspired by the black site, as we can see slapped on the side of the door to this compound that I, I guess we can't enter. Now for the level itself, there's not a whole lot going on here. You can't go inside the compound and you really only fight around the desert in front of it. But still, all the thematic elements of the game help bring this together. With all the giant monsters and B-movie memorabilia all over the place, it's still a fun time. If you're a fan of aliens, you should still probably check this one out. But let's hit the road with the next one in the old Dreamcast racer, Speed Doubles. This one has a racetrack dedicated to Nevada. Nevada? I keep switch- I just- I don't know, man. As you'd expect, Vegas shows up, but we're not here to talk about that. Part of the track actually has you racing through a military facility, obviously in reference to Area 51. If that wasn't enough for you, well, you have a UFO zooming on by just a little ways into the first lap. Second time around, you're gonna see three, and they're going to attempt to abduct your car. A little ways away, you're going to see a UFO crash into the side of rock, and third time around, that's gonna become a fiery hazard for you to avoid. Now, all this is well and fine, but the most interesting thing to me on this map is this road sign. As you can see, it says UFO Highway, and this is an obvious reference to the real world extraterrestrial highway, the road that travels closest along to Groom Lake in the real world. I've personally traveled along this years ago, and while I didn't see aliens, I did come across an angry cow that almost charged my car, but, well, that's a story for another time. Anyway, I know this is just a slight nod, but I cannot think of any other video game giving a reference to this road, so I thought that was pretty cool. But let's keep going, and let's get a little more obvious with our choices. So, you got here at last. Everyone's been waiting for you. Here in the spiritual successor to Goldeneye, you actually infiltrate the facility itself to rescue a gray alien. The level starts off standard enough, you're blasting your way through guards and the like, but things go science fiction-y really quickly, even leading you to alien weaponry. And eventually, you're gonna have to dress up as one of the scientists to sneak your way through to rescue said alien. Perfect Dark is considered a classic for the N64. And while it has aged a bit, and if you don't like that weirdo controller, well, it has been re-released for Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox 360, and Rare Replay for the Xbox One, which 
thankfully includes a more modern controller layout if you're so inclined. But let's get back into a car with our next game, Vigilante 8. This game is so rooted in the American Southwest and the supernatural, it's no surprise that you're going to find a level based on Area 51. Now you might notice that that name is nowhere in the game. The level itself is just called Secret Base. As you can see in the level descriptor, it says Advanced Weapons Research Center, Site 4, Papoose Dry Lake. Now hardcore conspiracy theorists should be well familiar with all of those words, and should be happy to see that the team at Luxoflux did their homework putting this map together. See, the Papoose Dry Lake is still on the lands of Area 51 in real life. It's about 10 miles south of the Groom Lake facility. And why exactly is that a big deal? Well, give you a little bit of history, the alien conspiracy of Area 51 didn't truly blow up until 1989 with one Bob Lazar. He claimed that he briefly worked at Area 51, but not at the main Groom Lake area, but on another base known as Site 4, next to, you guessed it, the Papoose Dry Lake. So, this is Vigilante 8's interpretation of this supposed base. Here you have what looks like stealth bombers, some small trailers, a runway with a hangar, and if you're playing the original game as opposed to the sequel like I am here, you're also going to find an alien spacecraft. And also for the original game, you can unlock the spacecraft, so just keep that in mind. Unfortunately, I am playing the sequel on the Dreamcast, so I'm instead just going to play this little hippie van that hauls down UFOs as a special attack. And as you can see, we also have like a moon buggy here that's driven by a monkey. But there's a lot of space themed stuff here, it's pretty rad. Also, so these back to the future hovering tires which is just I, I hate these now if you drive through the front gates of this level you're gonna get blasted by a laser turret but it is kind of cool how it looks like the real world area 51 signage telling you not to come in or they're gonna shoot you but if you go off road you can pass them safely and you'll find a larger building housing some items and some missile silos all in all the level's actually pretty bland nowhere near as memorable as some of the others in this game but for what it is i greatly appreciate it and this would not be the only car combat game to feature dreamland uh, not not that one so our next pit stop is going to be rogue trip this is an underrated gem of a car combat game and one i will use any excuse to talk about we will deep dive this game at some point but for now all you need to know is yes there is an area 51 level and also like the original vigilante 8 you can unlock a ufo if you choose and i'm going to be playing the ufo here to be a little more thematically fitting for the level and because it can fly give you a better view of the map as you'd expect there are a bunch of military bunkers and hangars one of them housing glass tubes with specimens and a bloody autopsy table at the center there's also goofy signage around welcoming aliens which as you can see whether you're playing a ufo or not you're gonna have ufos flying around in the skies above there's also a crash saucer on display and a spaceship themed hotel called alien inn and while they look nothing alike this does remind me of the little alien inn a real world kitschy little motel restaurant and gift shop not too far from area 51 now i don't know if this is a reference or if both of these separate parties just landed on the obvious pun on their own but it's still nice to see some kind of representation for this little place intentional or otherwise oh and i forgot to mention there is also a dish that can send you to the moon but before we head that way here's a weird little easter egg if you're so inclined so the game has a weapon power-up station in each level if you happen to have any of these barrel bombs you can upgrade them and if you throw one of these upgraded bombs behind the downed spacecraft and just leave it there don't set it off yet head up to the moon now if you set it off here you you blow up the the planet and then the bits of planet earth will come crash landing into the moon and just uh, blow that up too, leaving you floating in space with nothing but, well, UFOs. And that that's that's it. You, you, you can't beat the level if you go out like this. You have to quit out. Hail to the king, baby. Our next stop is going to be Duke Nukem 3D, also featuring an Area 51 level, but as a secret, which, you know, is fitting. It's really late in the game. If you're curious on how to get there, you need to be in the fifth chapter of the birth campaign, known as Pigsty. Make your way to the courtroom and the George Washington portrait that's behind the judge's seat. This is actually a secret door to the alternate exit of this level. And from there, you find Area 51. And since we're really only here to explore the map, we're going to make sure that those pesky walls and doors aren't a problem. Thanks to some simple codes, we can access the areas players were never meant to see. Like, the, the behind this truck. That's, that's pretty cool. Since this is Duke Nukem, a lot of the challenge comes from blasting aliens and solving environmental puzzles while navigating maze-like levels. And being in early 3D, it's not the prettiest place to explore these days. But it's still intriguing nonetheless. The outer perimeter features a warning sign and gate in a simple desert area. And within the walls are going to be laboratories, conveyor belts, secret missile silos, and even an alien spacecraft, which you can actually teleport inside of if you're tenacious enough. And I think this might be the only game on this list that actually has a groom lake. Granted, in real life, it's a dry lake bed, and in the game, it's 
a puddle in a cave, but the effort is appreciated. I was actually really impressed with how expansive this level turned out to be. Even though I had cheats on that made me invincible and walk through walls, I still felt like there was a bunch of secrets to uncover. Yeah, the early 3D isn't exactly eye candy these days, but if you're a sucker for graphics that look like tunnels made out of cardboard colored on with crayons, and you still somehow haven't explored Duke's interpretation of Area 51, well, I highly recommend it. But let's go from one crunchy old game to another. Outside Groom Lake, at the edge of what is rumored to be a top secret Air Force base, although the government has always denied its existence. For some reason, air activity and radio traffic in the area is at its highest in recent memory, leading to speculation that the government covers up. Broken Helix was an early game made for the original PlayStation. I came across mine for a few bucks at a thrift store years ago, and I'm only now playing it after researching for this episode. And turns out, this entire game takes place in Area 51. And if you've never played this game before, the first thing you're going to ask yourself is, is, is that Bruce Campbell? When I was a kid, I loved to blow things up. Plastic army men were my favorite. Yep, Mr. Evil Dead himself voices the protagonist in this game. The premise is simple enough, you're here to take back the base from some terrorists. And yes, as you'd expect, there are aliens and things get all plot twisty, and that's all well and fine. But unfortunately, I can't really show you a whole lot of it because my copy of the game always freezes up at some point or another. So I only got so far, and I can only rewatch the opening so many times. So what you see is what you're getting from me. For this one, all I can really do is hope that I just made you aware of a game if you hadn't heard of it before. Honestly, with some patience and another copy, I could probably do a full Game Apologist episode on this title. Like a lot of early 3D games that had no clue what they were doing, this was a very ambitious and creative game. And again, it has Bruce Campbell, before he made his big break as the narrator for Spider-Man tutorials. That's what he's known for, right? As for Area 51, they get quite out there with the design, even with these crunchy old graphics. All of the interior looks alien. I mean, this place was designed by humans, right? Also, one of these security cameras is just propped up in the men's bathroom watching a guy take the most depressing poop I have ever seen. Look how upset he is about that poop. I don't care if this is a classified black site, that dude should get HR involved. So, moving on, you would think the XCOM series would have Area 51, but as far as I can tell, it only really exists in mods. And I could be completely wrong here. I am not familiar with this franchise at all. I've just done what research I could do online, and I really can't find anything. So if you are familiar with these games, please just let me know how wrong I am. I would love to revisit this when we revisit Area 51. But all that aside, there is still a game from the series I want to talk about. And that's the one nobody likes. We are at war, and not the one we were expecting. Groom range, 2100 hours. Survivors, six. In just a few minutes, our enemy managed to destroy the primary strategic command center. By 2130, strategic command itself ceased to exist. The Bureau, XCOM Declassified. Now, you could almost consider this game the origin story of Area 51. The game takes place in 1968, where you play Agent Carter, not that one, as he becomes involved with the Bureau, the guys behind UFO conspiracies and making sure the American public remains unaware of the alien threat. The first level's base is an obvious nod to Area 51, being named Groom Range and all that. And within these walls, they are researching a classified new element from space. Also, this awesome 60s aesthetic is just fits so well with everything that's happening here. Of course, you eventually have to blow it up, but after that, the main XCOM base that you work out of, well, it's basically Area 51. I mean, all this takes place in Southern Nevada. What do you, uh, Nevada? I just, mm. Even if you never see the words Area 51, it's basically all of that without the name. And it's a cool perspective we don't see in any other game we're talking about. You are part of the government trying to cover this up. That's not a role we see a whole lot. That's kind of awesome. Now, the game isn't perfect, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I was surprised by how much I was enjoying it after everything I've heard. So when it comes to gameplay and all that, we will do a deeper dive in its own Game Apologist episode. All this aside, this isn't why I brought up this game for this episode. See, the Bureau might be the only game on this list wrapped up in an actual 
alien conspiracy. You remember earlier when I mentioned that the United States government had not even confirmed that the Vasily was known as Area 51 until 2013? Well, they declassified the documents detailing this the same week as the Bureau's launch. And hang on, there's more. Apparently, the man behind the marketing of the game, Nick Pope, was also formally in charge of the British Ministry of Defense's UFO desk. And, um, well, as you can imagine, that, uh, that, that didn't last. Maybe just hiring the guy was in part a marketing stunt? I mean, it's not like they didn't see the guy's resume. But if that was the intention, it did the job. This started off its own set of conspiracies that are, uh, well, probably much more interesting than the game itself. I give you new orders. Survive. Adapt. Win. Welcome to XCOM. Okay, so we arrive at our last stop for the day. We could not make a video about Area 51 in video games without mentioning the Area 51 video game. We all knew it was going to lead to this, but I'm going to only focus on one of the games in the series today. We'll get to the others in due time. The first few games were arcade on-rails gallery shooters. And... <sighs> I just don't want to talk about it today. I, it's been like 20 years since I've heard the demo loop of this game and I still can't stand it. If you grew up in the 90s, you were bound to run into this machine at some point or another. But the game I want to focus on today is the series reboot on the original Xbox and PS2. As a game, there's not a whole lot going for it. It plays fine enough, but it's nothing special. It's clearly inspired by the likes of Halo and Doom 3, and you can't really blame Midway for trying to cash in on that. They also brought in the likes of Marilyn Manson and David Duchovny to voice some of the characters. Mr. Manson does what he does, and David, well, he's not exactly known for emoting, and uh, well, he certainly wasn't about to change that here. McCann, Ramirez, Crispy. We'd been on a hundred missions together. They didn't deserve to die like this. No one deserves to die like this. A lot of the gameplay just has you blasting waves of mutant soldiers, which is a nice callback to the original game's gameplay, but it's nothing interesting. It takes quite a while before you even start seeing other enemy types, and eventually you get your own mutant transformation. But yeah, all in all, as a first-person shooter, it's pretty uninteresting. But things do pick up as the game carries on, even tasking the player with environmental challenges, and very rarely you'll get cute little sight gags. And the greys, yet the, the alien on the cover, that doesn't even show up until the end of the game. So if you're wanting proper aliens, you're gonna have to wait a while. But the game isn't that long, and despite some dated design, it's still perfectly competent. It's vaporware at this point, so you can just go find it and download it. And I got my Xbox copy for a single dollar, so it's not exactly expensive if you want a console copy. And I don't want to spoil some of the sight gags in here, so if you're a fan and you somehow haven't played this game, you, you kind of need to. Now it is important to note that there is a sequel to this game, but as of right now, I have yet to play it. I do have a copy, but wanted to give all these other games some time to shine. We will get to that in due time, don't you worry. And that, my friends, is where we end our journey for the day. But again, there are a whole lot of other games to check out when it comes to Area 51. For now, I hope I at least pointed out something you might not have heard of or tried before. And as you can see from the games on display already, there's a wide variety of interpretations of this base. We even get to see some recreations of actual locations you can check out in real life. Whether or not any of these conspiracies are real, I personally can't help but get caught up in all of it. I mean, I want it to be real. It's so ingrained in our culture, if it actually came to light that there were aliens in that base, I, I don't think it'd be any kind of big deal. We'd probably make a bigger stink if it just turned out that there was regular old weapons at this testing site. We may never know for sure, so thank goodness we have some pretty awesome games with some wonderfully creative people behind them to give us an adventure that's probably much more satisfying than whatever reality ends up being. We'll eventually take another trip to Area 51 to see what other games we can explore, but until then, I hope you guys enjoyed your journey. This is a new series I'm going to be doing, and uh, I'll be honest, if you watch it or not, I'm going to keep doing it because I love exploring games in this weird niche way. I want to keep going with it. And if you do too, well, you know how to support YouTubers, subscriptions and the bells and whatever. I don't need to tell you that. What I would like you to tell me is what games you would like to see, either with Area 51 or just Gamecation in general. What other locations do you want to see? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this. Hope you all have a good day. I'll catch you guys later. Hey, you! <laughs> Grab a body bag.